Hi, I'm Jackson, and this is Ideas of Play. There's a great TED Talk with Mark Ronson, a music producer who's produced everyone from Nas to Paul McCartney to Amy Winehouse. In it, he talks about sampling, where you take a portion of a song or a sound and incorporate it into your own music. It's something that's subtly shaped a ton of famous tracks. Bronson talks about how artists need to thread the needle between copying and creating something new. And that's exactly what I want to talk about, not with music, but with TV, and specifically Netflix's Stranger Things. You've been warned. Spoilers ahead. Let's go back to that TED Talk. You know, in music, we take something that we love and we build on it. You can't just sort of hijack nostalgia wholesale. You have to take an element of those things and then bring something fresh and new to it. Stranger Things is abound with nostalgia. And when you watch the show, what stands out immediately is that it references classic movies a lot. This video went viral shortly after the show came out, pointing out dozens of cinematic references. Nearly every shot is an homage to a film from the late 70s or early 80s. In fact, they're so apparent that even if you haven't ever seen those movies, these references carry a familiarity. They've become canon in our culture. Their quotes and images transcend the works themselves. We've done enough here. Never! What? Truffle shuffle them! Hey Gary, who am I? Phone ho! <laughs> it's tempting to look at these references as a kind of pandering, that the show is simply cashing in on our love of these classics. Sampling from something so iconic is dangerous territory. You remind the audience of that time period, rather than using it to set the mood. Unless using a nostalgic mood is your goal. But what does that do? Why use nostalgia? Well, what is nostalgia? I think we all know the feeling, but it's something that's really hard to describe. The word itself actually comes from the Greek words nostos, meaning homecoming, and algos, meaning pain or ache. A Swiss medical student came up with the term in the 1600s when Swiss mercenaries started displaying anxiety and depression while fighting away from home. It was thought that this could lead to desertion or even death. And according to Jean-Jacques Rousseau, soldiers were banned from singing traditional songs because their leaders were afraid it might ruin morale. Although it's not thought of as a medical diagnosis anymore, the symptoms described then pretty much hit the nail on the head. Nostalgia is this feeling of opposites at the same time. Look at this one. Look at this one. <laughs> Comfort in a memory and pain that that memory is gone. At its core, filmmaking tries to make you feel something, to engage emotionally. It uses emotion as a lens and points us like a camera. And that's exactly how Stranger Things uses its samples of nostalgia. They create a strong link to this emotion and a closely related one, homesickness. At the very least, these emotions help us connect with Will's friends and family. They're grieving at a loss, even if they don't completely believe he's dead. And the whole show is kind of about trying to turn back the clock to before Will disappeared, even though that's impossible as everything has changed. But this is the party right here in this room. Elle's one of us now. Um, no, she's not. Not even close. Never will be. When Will's back and you're not a secret anymore, my parents can get you an actual bed for the basement. But as a storytelling device, nostalgia and homesickness are powerful emotions that suck you in, which is really useful for surprising us with horror. <laughs> Take this scene. Joyce talks to Will through the glow of Christmas lights. It's sampling the connection Elliot feels with E.T., or when Indiana Jones discovers that statue at the beginning of his adventure. And the fact that there are Christmas lights only adds to the nostalgia factor. And then suddenly, the Demogorgon breaks through the wall, just as we had finally let ourselves forget about it. Even these scares are samples taken from horror classics, like A Nightmare on Elm Street and Alien. They leave us with a feeling not unlike deja vu. We have the vague sensation we've seen this before, but we can't place it right away because the context has changed. The show's combining horror and adventure on multiple levels and infusing the whole thing with an off-balance feeling that only nostalgia can really provide. We're shifted from E.T. to Alien, from the Goonies to Halloween.
We're familiar with everything Stranger Things is sampling, but when they're remixed together, we don't really know how to feel about anything. And that's exactly what the show's best scenes do. They combine samples to create something new. Elle proves that she's not E.T. when she doesn't fly the kids gently away from the cops. She smashes their van violently. Nancy loses her virginity to Steve, sampling the romance of John Hughes while we're shown horror in the death of her friend Barb. The ending of the season is so effective because it gives us the narrative payoff of the adventure rom, only to sample horror again and leave us with a completely different tone. It's easy to point out that Stranger Things is nostalgic and that it samples classic movies, but I think that was always the point. It always wanted you to notice the similarities and to feel the mixture of emotion that comes with them. It's not being nostalgic just to be nostalgic, it's playing with how that leaves you vulnerable. Hawkins the town feels safe enough, it's the physical embodiment of national nostalgia. But that only leaves its people that much more defenseless when the tone flips. Its familiarity becomes at once comforting and unsettling when the Hawkins they knew becomes a memory and part of their own nostalgia. Its samples don't bind Stranger Things to classic sci-fi or horror or adventure, but it mixes them and together creates something new. Thanks so much for watching. I'm just starting my channel, but I have two goals for it. One is to make deep dives of topics for people who have seen what I'm talking about, and the other is to say to those who haven't, hey, this is what I think is cool about this, and I think you should check it out. I only did the deep dive for Stranger Things, but I'll have a preview video coming soon in a series I'm going to call Why You Should Watch. Please comment, like, and subscribe. My email and Twitter are in the description, as well as my Patreon page, so swing by there. I want to make this channel as good and fun as I can, so any donation you make there is going to help me out so much. Thanks again.